Today, our focus will be on compressors. One specific type is a compressor supported on a magnetic bearings. These compressors find their installation in both chillers and heat pumps. When we go back to these figures, this particular compressor utilizes active magnetic bearings. The operational principle of active magnetic bearings relies on electromagnetic suspension induced by eddy currents in a conductor. In this video, we'll delve into the details of Danfoss compressors. The lower part of the figure provides a cross-sectional view of the compressor. And we will cover the details of this compressor design. The dimensions of this compressor are approximately 1 meter in width and 0.75 meters in height. The component you see here represents the shaft. And these are the magnetic bearings. And these magnetic bearings levitates the shaft through electromagnetic force as previously explained. The stability during the hovering is maintained by a crucial feedback control loop influencing both suspension stiffness and damping. Notably, the maturity of magnetic bearings was realized with the advancement of electronics and the introduction of modern computer-based control technology. Returning to this figure, let's explore the backup ball bearings. These backup ball bearings come into play during the power loss from the electrical blackouts when the magnetic bearings fail. Here is another example of magnetic bearings, this time from SKF. Magnetic bearings are highlighted in this section. And the backup ball bearings are featured here. Revisiting this slide, the backup ball bearing serves to prevent the shaft from rubbing against the motor during an emergency shutdown. This component represents the motor. For backup ball bearings to function under emergency conditions, the gap between the shaft and the backup ball bearings must be smaller than the gap between the shaft and the motor. In this example, the radial gap between the shaft and the backup bearing is approximately 0.2 mm. Meanwhile, the radial gap between the shaft and the motor is around 1.7 mm. The smaller the radial gap of the backup ball bearing ensures that in case of magnetic bearing failure, the shaft touches the backup bearing first, preventing damage to the motor. For reference, the radial gap between the magnetic bearing and the shaft is approximately 0.5 mm. This gap is also smaller than the gap between the shaft and the motor. And it's larger than the gap of the backup bearing, ensuring the support from the backup bearing before potential damage to the magnetic bearing during a failure. It is essential to note that the specific gap mentioned here are contingent upon the design philosophy adopted by each company and vary based on the size of the compressor. Returning to the motor section here, the grooves you see here forms the cooling jacket. These grooves serve as a channel for liquid circulation. The liquid circulates through these grooves to absorb the heat generated by the electric motor, preventing excessive temperature rise and improving compressor efficiency. This section features the impellers. Notably, this compressor is two-staged, with the first stage impeller larger than the second stage. As the shaft spins, the flow progresses from the first stage impeller to the second stage impeller. This machine achieves high pressure rise by adding energy to the continuous flow of the fluid through the impellers. And this machine is called centrifugal compressor. In today's Part A video, we cover the basic layout of the compressor. In the next video, Part B will provide a more in-depth exploration of compressor design. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos.